Good evening, HQTs. How you doing? Now, we've all seen those no pets allowed signs. We don't like them, but we respect them. None of us more so than a certain French bulldog, though. The internet is torn up over this patient pup. He clearly read the cafe sign and waited outside like a good boy. That's man's best friend for you. But what about your best friend? Friends Friday is in full effect. Swipe right on my face right now to see your friends list. Connect your address book for a list of suggested friends to add. Their abbeys will pop up alongside the answers before the time is up. You'll be able to see who's the top dog of trivia and who needs to be thrown a bone. I'm Sharon Carpenter, your pet loving presenter at your phone's epicenter and this is HQ Trivia where thinking on your feet will earn you a treat. We see you out there players. Hi to Michael's mom Lisa and nephew Dominic, both of them celebrating their birthdays tomorrow. Happy birthday Pat Sullivan turning 14 today. Happy early Father's Day, Jimmy from Ethan. Hi to Mersha, just because teacher Deborah Kellerman has been nominated for an Exceptional Educator Award. That's amazing. And hello to Dex Stacker as well. Good luck to all of you players. The rules here are simple. I'm going to ask you a series of questions from easy to hard. You've got 10 seconds to tap the answer. If you get it correct, you move on. Answer all to all right, you win or you split the cash. Do not forget inviting friends to HQ using your code can score you those extra lives. You can use one per game, just not on the final round. And tonight, we are giving away a fully trained $5,000. That will get you a basket full of dog toys, classes to help you teach your pet to stay, and a fancy coffee maker for your home where your dog is more than welcome. But before you pet it, you've got to sweat it. Let's get to the quizzing. Here we go with Q1. What kind of train car typically contains an engine, food cooperative, ulterior motive, locomotive. Hopefully your engines are fired up on this one. Now you'll want to leave the quiet car if you're on the train right now. Why? Well, because picking the right answer might have you going loco. Locomotive is your winning answer here. 617,000 of you on the fast track. All aboard, because we are doing the locomotion onto Q2. What's the NFL penalty for clipping 15 yards? Saturday detention, no dessert. Does the punishment fit the crime? about to find out. What's the punishment for clipping your nails in a public place? That should be prison for life, gross. In football terms, it's only 15 yards for the win here. 607,000 of you going the whole nine yards on Q2. Clipping is when you throw your body across the back of your opponent below the waist. No dessert. Well, that's just a crime. Speaking of football, let's talk about the real football here where you actually use your feet. Let me know in the chat what country you are flying your flag for in the World Cup. Fly them high in the chat. Who's going to take home the trophy, do you think? Moving on to Q3. Which of these is not one of the physical phases of water? Ice, steam, stone. Is it making you thirsty for more? Now we all go through our phases. I'm a bad girl turned good, but just like water, one thing we don't turn is to stone. Stone, of course, is your winning answer. 587,000 of you with a stony-faced win. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it starts to steam when you make a pot of tea. But just remember, a watched pot never boils. Now we have some exciting news, HQTs. This Sunday on The Big Game, we have a very special guest host straight out of Wonderland, John Mayer himself. He'll be here with Quiz Daddy and a $25,000 prize. Do not miss out on the fun. 9 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. Back to the quizzing Q4. In which food is potato the principal ingredient? Ludafisk, Berber sandwich, hash browns. It's all about those spuds. Now, no meal is complete without a side of carbs, preferably in the shredded fried state of hash browns. Who doesn't love hash browns? 
We all love hash browns, 576,000 of you do. Now the Gerber is a hot open face sandwich and Ludafisk is a jellied fish concoction popular in Scandinavia. I'll stick to tots, thank you very much. Yeah, we see you in the chat. So many football fans out there. Smachini says that Germany is gonna win. Kalp the best says they're rooting for Messi. Doom Loop says they hope Germany pulls through as well. Lots of Germany fans out there. All right, here we go with Q5. The cartoon aardvark Arthur lives in which fictional town? Elwood City, Nightingale Heights, Bookerton. It's quite cute, Arthur, but it's nothing like an aardvark. Hopefully you're not clenching your fist at this one. John Legend's doppelganger lives in Elwood City. And you knew that, didn't you? 250,000 if you did, but my goodness, that was a brutal question. And yeah, am I gonna go? I'm gonna go with Savage. I'm gonna go with Savage, because we lost 300,000 of you there. Already here on Q5. Sadly, we've got to say goodbye to you, but 250,000 of you moving on. Arthur premiered in 1996, and he's been going ever since. Hey, what a wonderful kind of day where you learn to work and play. Let's play some more with Q6, which variety of solitaire is normally played with eight adjacent columns of cards? Spider, Free Cell, Klondike. Why get a partner when you can do it yourself? It's the most fun way to waste your own time, actually. Installed on millions of PCs. Free sell is what we are talking about here. And that was a toughie. My goodness, 150,000 of you gone, 91,000 of you moving on. Spider is played in 10 columns and Klondike in seven. Free sell is in the middle at eight columns. It's caused us to lose our minds over that coveted reshuffle. Q7, who is most likely to be carrying a challenge coin. Athlete, gamer, soldier. Hopefully this one isn't as challenging as those two were. Now, if you're like me, you don't know what's inside your bag. Lots of challenging junk and coins floating around, but no challenge coins. That's to the soldiers. The soldiers have those. 30,503 of you got that right. Carried by military members to identify themselves as part of a particular unit. No word on whether it's absolute or not. Q8, what US state capitals are separated by the Bitterroot Range, Nashville, Raleigh, Helena, Boise, Frankfurt, Charleston. What do you think? Hopefully a range of you will get this right. You'll likely be bitter if you got this wrong. Living up to its name is one of the toughest parts of the Lewis and Clark expedition between Helena and Boise, and oh boy, 14,000 of you nailed that one. The Bitterroot is also the state flower of Montana, and it's a lot prettier than it sounds. Q9, what 19th century work famously centers on an item hidden in plain sight, the purloined letter, the Pickwick Papers, the one million pound banknote. It's right in front of your eyes. So annoying when things are hidden in plain sight, right? Usually the shades on my head. Come out, come out wherever you are. It's the purloined letter for the win. 7,242 of you writing yourselves a win there. Edgar Allan Poe's short story was about a letter hidden from the police right there in the card rack. Q10, cutting a Mobius strip in half lengthwise gives you what? Two separate loops, one big loop, Two link loops, a Mobius strip. This one will really do your head in. A Mobius strip is a paper loop with a half twist in it. When cutting lengthwise, you'll end up with one big loop somehow. 2,881 of you going loopy with the win there. The Mobius strip was discovered by mathematicians in 1858. It only has one side and one edge. Baffling stuff. Q11, we're here already. Let's do it. The actor behind what Simpsons character also did voiceover work on the original Star Wars film, Ned Flanders, Lisa Simpson, Mo Sislak. 
I love Star Wars and I didn't even know this one. Voiceover work is a great gig. Where else can you show up in your PJs? Calm down, diddly. It's Ned Flanders for the win. 1,792 if you nailed it. Harry Shearer, the voice of Flanders, also did work in Star Wars A New Hope. Voicing officer Kurgi. Lightsabers at the ready because we're striking into the final round with 1,792 players left in the game. Another 94 using their extra lives to get back in. $5,000 up for grabs as we speak. Good luck to each and every one of you. Q12. The Canary Islands are widely to believed to be named after which of these mammals? Dromedaries, dogs, dolphins. And we thought it was canaries. Now the Spanish call this sunny archipelago of the northern African coast Las Eslas Canarias, which itself likely comes from the Latin name Canariae Insulae, literally translating to Island of the Dogs. How is that for a full circle game? Dogs for the win. We have 910 winners. You smashed it. <laughs> Nicely done, players. 910 winners standing. You totally slayed. Congratulations. You are taking home $5.50. We've got Piece of Dude. We've got Chubby Chub, Ham, Hammy 523, and a bunch of other winners as well. What are you going to do with that cash? Maybe get a great brunch this weekend. Chow down on some hash browns. Play solitaire, it's free, you'll still have plenty of money left over. Save up for a trip to the Canary Islands. Just add a little more cash onto that and you're good to go. There's a lot you can do with that money. That was a woofing good game, HQTs. You certainly deserve a treat after that. I'm Sharon Carpenter. As always, you can find me on the socials. Come say hi. Let me know how you did tonight, all right? And we'll see you back here tomorrow for another chance to win that cash at 9 p.m., a highly tempting $5,000. Until then, have a terrific Friday night, my lovelies. See you soon. Bye. Woo!